Hey everyone! Hello! Welcome to another What Are You Playing video. This week I'm joined by my daughter and we're going to talk about some games that we're going to take on an upcoming vacation. Yeah. All right, so we've each prepared a few titles uh, that we want to take with us on our trip. Um, by the time this video goes up, we will already be back from our trip. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, and uh, I guess let's go into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. So I will start. Uh, I intend to take two systems with me on my trip. Uh, I'm going to take my Evercade. And I'm going to take my Steam Deck. What are you taking with you on your trip? Nintendo Switch and Steam Deck. Nintendo Switch and Steam Deck. So, my first game that I'm taking uh, is Full Void for the Evercade. So, Full Void is uh, it's a modern uh, uh, spiritual successor to Flashback. The old Flashback game that came out for the Amiga... And it came out for the Sega Genesis. I had it on the Sega Genesis. Um, I think it also came out for the Super Nintendo. Um, but the flashback styles of games, these are these big rotoscoped, highly animated um, platformer adventure games. I really, really love them. Uh, and Full Void is uh, in that same classification of games. You play as um, this lady who is trying to defeat some sort of rogue AI that has kind of taken over the world. Um, it's got this dystopian setting, uh, and it's pretty cool. And I, I played a little bit last night as I was deciding what I wanted to bring, and uh, this one stood out as something I definitely wanted to play. Um, I'm not sure how long it is. I have a feeling it's probably going to be fairly short. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited to play it. Full Void. Yeah. For the Evercade. Okay, what's yours? Like the first game, or it's all world is ending. It's like on um, it's um on the Steam Deck, but it's like on Steam in general. But like it's like I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's like a visual novel, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it we haven't played it. So no, full I have disclosure. not. I've only watched like a trailer and I've, I've looked through, and it looks pretty cool. It's like. It, like these these people are in a digital world, digital world, and like little like glitches can happen, you know, with like video games and such, and like the glitches like can like have germ like horribly like big comps like consequences. So you know, I think they're trying to fix that or something. I don't know. Yeah, and so I gave her my old Steam Deck. Now that I have an OLED, technically it was still the high end one. So I didn't, it's not like I gave her garbage, but the point is, is that she's going to, it's going to be her inaugural run of during this vacation of the Steam Deck. And this is going to be one of the games she's playing. Oh. So uh, our world has ended and she hasn't, we had, neither of us have played it. We just recently purchased it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's all we can say. All right. Shall I go on to my next one? Yes. All right. So the next one, another Evercade title. This one is Home Computer Heroes Collection 1. Now, this one is kind of interesting because uh, it's a lot of independent uh, games that are uh, were made for kind of retro consoles. Um, for example, the 8-Bit Guy, he's a YouTuber. He made this, uh, I mean, actually a couple of games on here are his. Uh, Planet X2, which is a real-time strategy game, and Attack of the Petski Robots. Um, I think both of these are the Amiga versions, but uh, I could be wrong. Uh, the, the games obviously were available for other platforms. I think originally uh, he wrote them for the Commodore Pet, I want to say. In fact, I think the Petski Robots one definitely was originally on the, the, the Commodore Pet. Um, but I haven't played these. Um, I've never purchased them before this collection. 
and I'm I'm pretty excited to sit down and start playing them. Uh, one other thing that's on here is they've got something it's a farming farming simulator, uh, but ported to the Commodore 64. No, no, don't laugh. It, it's it's amazing. It's like it's all retro and blocky, and it just it really looks spectacular. Uh, I played a little bit of it to capture some footage last night, and I am extremely excited to play the the, the Commodore 64 version of Farming Simulator because that, I mean, honestly, if that had come out in the 80s when I was a kid, I would have loved that stupid thing. So yeah, Home Computer Heroes Collection One. Very excited to play it. All right, what's your next one? Uh, Corpse Factory, another original novel you gifted me. Corpse Factory. Yes. Yes. Also on Steam. Yes. You, you. Pl I think you play as like this, 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 um, this, this person who, like, so there's this, there's this girl, right? And her name's like, what's her name? Oh, I don't know what her name. Like, is. I didn't write it down. <laughs> like corpse or no, like. Well, she goes by corpse something. Corpse yeah. party? No. 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 Corpse Factory? Well, the name of the game is Corpse yeah, Factory. But it's basically like, she's kind of like an angel of death. Oh, that's fun. And like, <laughs> <laughs> and like, you, um, you're kind of one of her, like, there's this website, right? And you can like go on air to request a death of somebody you hate. And basically she goes around and kills that person. And apparently somebody despises me. I don't know why. I don't know what I've done. I, I didn't do anything wrong. The character in the game, not you in real life. I know, but I'm... <laughs> <laughs> but, like, there's all these other characters, and they're trying to, like, kind of protect you from her. Mm. Not sure how it's going to end. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards a really, like... It probably has multiple endings, oh. I would think. Uh, anyway, it's, a, it's another visual novel. Yeah. Um, another one that I bought for her to, to play on the Steam Deck, and yeah, should be fun. All right, so my next one for the Evercade is uh, the Delphine Software Collection, Volume 1. Uh, now, surprise, surprise, uh, <laughs> I... Like I said previously with the Full Void, when I talked about Full Void, I really was a big fan of Flashback. Uh, Delphine Software Collection actually includes the original Flashback. I believe it includes the Amiga version of the game, so not the version that I own and play. Um, but in addition to that, uh, it also has a bunch of other uh, titles that Delphine Software did before um, Out of This World and before flashback. It includes uh, something called Future Wars, um, and then another one called Operation Stealth. I haven't played them too long. I played them a tiny bit last night to record some footage and, uh, you know, basically decide whether or not I wanted to bring this with me on the trip. And I decided to go ahead and do it. The other two are kind of point and click, click adventures, so they're not quite the, uh, the adventure platforming game that Flashback is. Uh, but they played really well on my uh, uh, Evercade, so I'm pretty excited to, to try these out. Um, yeah, Delphine uh, Software Collection Volume 1. Uh, pretty excited to play it. All right, what's uh, your next game? Um, Night Cascades. Night, Night Cascades. This is another visual novel, correct? Surprise, surprise. Yes. It's, um, I'm not even entirely sure what this one is. I, I saw, like, some kind of, it might be some, like, you have to, I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of a detective sort of game. Yeah, it looked like, you looked like you were solving some sort of mystery, maybe not a crime. But, like, a mystery. Yeah. Mystery. And it's, like, two girls, two ladies. Two ladies. That are solving some sort of mystery, and I don't know yeah. what. Yeah. It looks pretty cool, though. I will, I, it, it has kind of a, um... You know, it has, it's the traditional visual novel flair with, like, the static characters and the, the speech bubbles and stuff. Uh, but it has some pretty interesting UI elements. I like how it has, like, a pixelated font and some pixelated stuff. It kind of has a retro feel. Um, this one, honestly, I, I'm not a big visual novel guy. In fact, I tend to not like visual novels. But I can't deny that this one actually did look kind of cool. And I, I, I don't know. I'm, don't I'm interested to see what you feel about it. As you play it and finish it. 
Okay, so the next one uh, is actually two games, two cartridges. It's actually, what? It's actually six games, <laughs> because that's the way Evercade works. But it's two cartridges. It's the Duke Nukem Collection, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Um, now, I... I am probably not going to play all of these games in the trip. We're only going to be gone for a week, and there are six Duke Nukem games on here. Um, the ones that I am the most interested in playing... Uh, I am interested in playing Duke Nukem 1 and Duke Nukem 2 Remastered, mainly because I've never actually played them. I own them on Steam, but, you know, these are games that traditionally run in DOSBox, and, you know, DOS platformers are always, were always kind of a clunky thing to play. And the, the point is, is that I never really got into the original releases. These ones are considered remastered because they actually were ported to run natively on the Evercade hardware, which means they have widescreen support, uh, they have modern controls, more smooth animations, etc., etc., etc. So uh, I feel like this is the best way to experience these classic games. And I feel like I should be able to push through and, uh, you know, push through my initial revulsion for uh, DOS era platformers and be able to experience it and play it, especially considering that it, you know it's a pretty critically acclaimed game. Um, the first the, the first two games are ones that I have never played, but people seem to really like them. So I'm pretty excited to play those. Uh, the other one that I'm interested in trying out in this collection, I mean, obviously there's a bunch of things in here. Um, there's two different uh, PlayStation 1 games, but I'm not as interested in those right now. The one that I'm really interested in is Duke Nukem Advance. This was a port of the Duke Nukem 3D game uh, to the Game Boy Advance. And I, I can't remember if this actually came out or if it was not finished and they, they managed to finish it and add it in this collection. I don't remember which one it is. Uh, but regardless, it is a game that I've never played before. I've played, of course, Holy Duke Nukem 3D, but I haven't played uh, this Game Boy Advance version. And so I'm kind of excited to play the Game Boy Advance version. It's, it's going to be an interesting experience. Yeah, Duke Nukem Collection. going to be fun. All right, what, what is your next one? Uh, Slime Rancher. Slime Rancher. And what are you playing it on? Uh, Switch. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me explain. Let me explain the whole ordeal with me. Specifically, he's playing Splime Rancher. Okay. So, there was an update on the 18th of December to the rest of the month, to like the 25th. Um, there is an event with, called the Wiggly Wonderland. It's a weird name. It's a really weird name, but like, it's basically like the 12 days of Christmas. But instead of getting like, a kind of, like, there's this twinkle slime you can find all around the map, and like it, it plays a little cutscene of it singing, and then once it finally explodes, uh, portals open up with like a bunch of like slimy, like twinkly stuff around it. And once it stops singing, all these little note thingy majiggies, like there's like C, F sharp, C sharp, you know, kind of the kind of the instrument like notes and like they're like in these little ornaments that kind of float you know like it's, it's weird but like, and what do you do do you do you get the ornaments of course and what do you do with the ornaments put them away and never pro and probably never use them <laughs> but <laughs> like but, little trinkets yes little trinkets that you can maybe use if you want to annoy the absolute hell out of yourself by putting them into a slime cage mm. Because, you know, slimes move around a lot. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know. So do we want to tell everybody what Slime Rancher the game is? Okay, so you basically, um, you're this, you're this, you're this woman named Beatrice, uh, Beatrix LeBlue. I don't know how to, sp I don't know, I don't know how to say her name. You're, you basically get this ranch on another island. And there's, like corals you can like store slimes different kind of slimes in different corals and sometimes like corrals let me st let me let me let me well i'm just saying it's i don't i don't it, a coral is is a is a thing in the ocean and a corral it, it, 
A coral's a cuter name for it. Anyway, so you can like, sometimes there's like upgrades you need for specific slimes, like for, let's say the Forcifer slime. I don't know how to pronounce that name. The what's kind? The Forcifer. Forcifer? Yeah, it's like P-H-O-S. Phosphorus. Is that it? Does it glow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, phosphorus. Oh. That's a, oh. It's a, it's a, it's a oh. chemical. Oh. <laughs> it's basically like a firefly. Mm. And, it need, and it only comes out at night. And you basically need... It, it, it disappears in daylight. So you need a special cage in order to keep it. So is it kind of, it's kind of a... Uh, it's not quite... It's like an adventure game. With livestock elements, like you're a farmer? Yeah. Okay. Kind of, kind of I like mean, Stardew Valley, but a little better. Yeah, I, I have... Oh, yeah, Stardew Valley is really good. But listen, but wait, with, with Slime Rancher, you get a jetpack, and you can, uh -huh. like... Also, there's barely any invisible barriers. Mm. I'm telling you, you can go anywhere. And I mean anywhere, except for the Slime Ocean. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I have played Slime Rancher the first one. I haven't played the sequel. I you, love Slime Rancher 2. Yeah, you have both of them. And Slime Rancher 2, I think, should run on your Steam Deck. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you are a big fan of the Slime Rancher games. You you have a bunch of little stuffed animals of the slimes that we've got over the years. And you... you My favorite is the Honey Slime. The Honey Slime? The yeah. Honey slime. So you are a big fan of Slime Rancher. So yeah, it's kind of obvious it's, it's gonna be one of the new ones you're gonna take. Can I, can I, can I say one more feature about it? Sure. So basically, um, with slimes, you can feed them stuff and they have like their favorite food. And when you feed them stuff, you get plorts. And plorts you can sell or put in your uh, little slime science thing so you can make uh, gadgets. And oh, another thing. Um, I was gonna work towards getting Victor's workshop because I haven't gotten that yet. And you basically need like a treasure cracker two and like up to like 20 gadgets for that, what I cannot do. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be entirely serious. Um, but yeah, basically you just, you just, you just get that. Well, cool. It's very nice. It's, it's my, it's the favorite, it's the best, it's my best game. All right, so my last game and the last game of the video is uh, Good Boy Galaxy and Witch and Wiz <laughs> for the Evercade. Um, so these are actually two games. Good Boy Galaxy is a Game Boy Advance game. I uh, It was actually kickstarted um, last year, and I'm actually one of the kickstarters. But what's absolutely crazy about it is that the Evercade version uh, has come out before the uh, Game Boy Advance version, the one that we originally kickstarted. Uh, which, I don't know, I, I'm not sure that's exactly irritating, but it's, I don't know, it feels a little a little bad. But whatever, uh, I'm still pretty excited to play it, and I'm going to definitely put some time into it during this trip. Uh, the other game, Witch and Wiz, is another game that I own. It is an NES game, uh, and it is one that I really enjoy. I've played it quite a bit. But uh, I haven't, you know, completed it, and uh, it's a it's a little. I guess you could say it's kind of a puzzle platformer, um, maybe kind of vaguely puzzle platforming. But I, uh, I I intend to play and see how far I can get on the Evercade. It's it's pretty fun. It's the sort of thing where. You know, if you're up and you're like in an airplane or something, and you don't really want to play something intense, you want a little puzzler. Uh, Witch and Wiz is a, it seems like it'd be a great thing to play in an airplane. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That's when I'm going to play it. Do you want to see something real cool that I, I randomly wrote down? Sure. I might, <laughs> okay, so I got this set of like two precise like like five point five millimeter uh pens so i could do a detail work yeah i randomly brought one down so oh I yeah i love i love these types of pens they're really they're really sweet. i uh i love extra fine points getting in there i can't do it as much anymore my hands are too shaky see look, look but when i was when i was young yeah that's a good <laughs> point right there <laughs> yeah that would be some good drawn but you can't because your hands are shaky. Yeah, my hands are kind of too shaky for the... As I'm getting older, the hands are all shaky. 
So I can't do the precision stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. I also don't do much other than doodle anymore. You, you're <laughs> the one who does more art stuff these doodle, days. Doodle, doodle, doodle. Um, anyway, I think that's it. Anything else? We're going to have fun yeah. on our trip. We're going to go visit family and friends. Anyway, that's it. See ya. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another What Are You Playing video. This week, uh, we're going to... Oh, my God. This is a weird one. <laughs> okay, I got to start over. What do you mean? I, just got, I was way too intense. <laughs> no, you're fine. I think. <clears throat> All right. Uh, I will clip it. Okay. One more. One more coming out. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway. <laughs>